For anyone who lives in New England, fall is one of nature's special gifts. Every autumn, the rolling hills of Western Massachusetts light up with brilliant colors saturating the landscape with a patchwork of amber, crimson, and gold. Fall also happens to be a spectacular season for fishing the rivers and streams that trace the valleys as they flow from the Berkshires to the Connecticut River. With the cooling waters, the trout look to take advantage of the final fly hatches as they venture out of their pockets and riffles to feed before winter's bite sets in. I had been looking forward to once again fishing the Deerfield River for a fall fly fishing excursion with good friend and guide Chris Jackson of Chris Jackson Fly Fishing. I fished and filmed before with Chris when we set out just after Hurricane Irene back in 2012. After Irene, many believed the fishing would never be the same again, but nature has a tendency to bounce back against all odds. Now, eight years after the hurricane, the river has adapted to many changes and has left few traces of what became known as a 100-year flood. With anticipation growing with each glimpse of the river, I met up with Chris Jackson for another trip down this hidden paradise any angler would appreciate. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On the Waters of Angling Adventure. Chris Megan today with Chris Jackson, an old friend of mine. We fished together going back. We tried to fish during the hurricane and most of this area got washed out during the, during the big hurricane back, uh, was that Irene? I'm trying yeah, to think. Irene. Of, Irene came through here. A lot of the roads that we were fishing kind of actually collapsed down into the banking. Oh my God, that was the craziest thing. I really thought that uh, our guiding careers were over on the river. All the guides were concerned because we lost all this infrastructure and the river dramatically changed. I mean, holes we used to fish were filled in, new holes were carved and we're like, what happened to the fish? You and know? that wasn't like a 50 year high that year. That was like 100 or 150 it years. Was, it was three feet shy of the 500 year flood mark. So it was a flood of historic proportions, proportions of that way. Yeah. Well, we got good water today. I'm back fishing the Deerfield River. Fall just started. Chris, what are we going to do to start out? We're going to start out with indicators and see how it goes. And you know, you got to be ready to change tactics as, you, as you're guiding through the day. So we're going to start out with the old reliable indicator fishing and, and move on from there. Well, we guys, we got the best of the best. We're going to push off right now. We're going to start heading down river. I know we got a little bit of water to cover. And this is going to be, you know, I think we did this last time. We I think fished we, a little we did the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Where Although we, we got to... a camera guy in the boat now. And fortunately, he's a little lighter, but I think I might be a little heavier, Chris. So Chris, when we're throwing here, it's going to be one of these kind of throwing it back here at 10 o'clock. I'll give you a quick demo. Absolutely. So basically, we're going to just throw it out there, kind of high stick it along. And when it gets even my position perpendicular, we're just going to do a little mend, a little upstream mend. And then I'm just going to track it. That's, that's the deal. OK, perfect. I'll tell you what, that, that white indicator seems to just blend right in with the bubble. So. It blends right in. So these spooky fish, like they don't even mind that little white indicator. That's kind of why I put it on. I tell you, when that white indicator gets in with a bubble, it's hard to see it. <laughs> this is a tough time of day with the little white indicator. I tell you what, you look away from your indicator for a second. And you, <laughs> That's you, when you're going to get the bite. First spot, zero. I don't know if I missed any spots or. No, no. All the spots that are right next to the road get a lot of pressure. Coming from Cape Cod, it's just a, such a different scenery. Yeah. And I remember, you know, the first time I came out here, you know, hard pressed to believe that this is in New England and in Massachusetts. It's just so different, the contour and everything about it. There he is. Just like that. <laughs> nice, Chris. Yeah, a do. I made the first cast in there. Well, I wasn't ready. You were saying that it was going to pick up a little bit down here. Yeah. Oh, oh. came on button. 
So really stick it to them okay. on, on the hook set. We're, we're using barbless hooks. The flies that I tie go barbless, uh, and they're really sharp. So, but you gotta stick them on the hook set. It's funny, I have a, a boulder coming up, I call it the lucky boulder, and, and typically from that point down, we're almost to it. It's usually like the demarcation line for the big pot of fish. I like to have it six inches over the bottom. What's the name of this fly? It's a mop fly. And it looks like you, you can see this from a country mile right now. You can see it from a country mile, and they go nutty for and it. throw now? Yep. All the right way to the bank? All, all the way to the bank. Or further over? Oh, no, that's perfect. Set. There he is. Good job. It's interesting. They weren't. They were more upriver the other day, but you know, different day. They find a different locale. I'm not even gonna get on the reel. I'm just gonna keep walking up right up to you. There he oh, is. Oh, look at that. Nice job. That's nice. That looks like a wild fish, too. You know, do they clip the, uh, on the on the stock? Do they clip that? I mean, most of the stock fish will be missing some fins, and that's not always the case, but this fish. This fish looks perfect, doesn't it? Yeah, and the wild ones tend to have smaller mouths than the, the hatchery fish. That looks like 100% wild fish right there to me. There you go, dude. Sweet. Oh, man. Awesome. <laughs> Good way to start, Chris. We got a beautiful day out here on the JFL River, fishing with Guide Chris Jackson, and that's the name of his company, Chris Jackson Guide Service. I had the opportunity to fish with Chris back in 2012, but that's how long and how quick the time goes. Oh my God. You know? And you know what's going by a little bit when Chris is giving me a hand getting into the boat. <laughs> Became a grandfather about a year ago, and uh, so my oldest daughter got married about three years ago, and we welcomed my first grandchild, Jack about a year ago and he's just the best. And Congratulations uh, on that. So throw it right in here and yeah. let it drift down? Same drift. And in closer, should I go a little bit? I would, I think they're a little bit further. I would go another four or yeah, five okay. feet and just get it away from the boat a little bit. And I think the fish are just kind of running a circuit in here, but. Take up the slack. So we don't have any white foam right now, so there's no excuse. There's only one thing out there to look at, and it's the <laughs> indicator. They are definitely biting fast this morning, though. I think they've seen this fly a couple times. They're like, I'm not so sure. Fred got in trouble the other day with that one. I don't know if I want to do it. It looks good. But... It looks so good, though. So, there he is. Oh. All right, I got to be a little quicker on the draw. Set. Nice, Chris. You don't even have a chance to get on the reel. It's just a matter of like, you know. That looks like a carbon copy of the last one. <laughs> oh, there it is. I need to find his big brother. All right, dude, don't tell any of your friends. <laughs> no, nothing happened. Chris made an adjustment. He dropped, he moved the indicator up a little bit to get us down. It seemed to make a huge difference presenting it just off the bottom. Man, there's no time to really get on the reel on these fish. I'm fighting them right here. When you, there's some big ones in here. I mean, there's some fish over 20 inches in here. If you hook one of those. You're gonna get on the reel. You're gonna get on the yeah. reel. I'm not gonna go as far up as we did last time because I feel like. They're kind of hanging right in that spot. Right in here. Right there. It seems like it's a sweet spot. That's it. 
<laughs> just like, oh, that's a better fish. Oh, that's a better, oh, oh. mother! I should have whacked him again. Yeah, you got four X on there. You can you can put the boots to him. Let's let that one drift out right okay. there. That was a better fish. That was that set. You got another one. <laughs> I'm looking away. <laughs> this guy committed suicide. That is where they're hanging out, Chris. They are right there. I looked away to have a conversation in my uh, caddy, Chris Jackson, who's <laughs> actually a guy, professional guy. Said set. Oh man, right about that last one. The one before this it was definitely I, bigger. This guy's actually a little bit nicer. But uh, that last one you hooked was definitely. That one was a nice one. But you know what, Chris? They are hanging within about a 10 foot stretch of that whole thing. That's another birdie. Look at the color on this guy. There we go. Gorgeous fish. What's happening is taking the scope out. Chris, I'm past kind of vertical up and down. I'm almost at one o'clock behind me. And I really need to even be back here yeah. a little bit because of the scope and the line. Yeah, there. like sometimes I'll come up and almost have the rod straight up over my head and you just want to keep going until you really- Really bury it in there that way. There. Guys, fishing the Deerfield River, it is beautiful. We looked at the weather earlier and we looked at it. We were going to come out here yesterday. We decided to put it off a day, and I think we made a great call. I'm glad us. you did. I was a little nervous with the rain, but this all worked out and it's actually absolutely gorgeous today. Nestled just on the river, Shelburne Falls along Mohawk Trail is a historic village that is actually split by the Deerfield. Although a small community, its artistic background and unique architecture harken back to an earlier and simpler era when the river was harnessed as one of the main sources for energy. Like a drawbridge leading into the center of town, the Bridge of Flowers is a well-known destination that combines turn-of-the-century construction with a reimagined flower garden that stretches across the Deerfield. Many of the town's buildings in the center are original structures and historic landmarks like Baker Pharmacy. The pharmacy is a living time capsule of a business in the heart of the village that to this day you can still pick up an ice cream sundae at their old-fashioned soda fountain while you wait on your prescription, as many locals have done for over a hundred years. One of the things I always have to remember is to slow down a little bit. Nice cast, Chris. And uh, But this is a bit, little bit of a rocket ship. What are we fishing with? That's a G Loomis NRX. Oh, that's on a really sweet run. Right, make a mend if you can. And this is a four or five weight. This is that's a, a five. Five weight. Beautiful rod. Loads nice. Uh, set, set. <laughs> I was a little delayed on that. I was looking down at the line. That's a nice that's fish. That's a good fish. We're using a Rio uh, five weight line, Rio Perception. And we got a, got a Nautilus reel on there. And I had not fished the reel line before. It's, it's my favorite line. I mean, I, I like Cortland too. Cortland makes a great line. Cortland makes a great line, great company, but Rio is just so innovative. That just their products are super innovative. Uh, and I do a lot of two-handed stuff and uh, they just have a lot of amazing products. This guy is just staying down. I'm gonna try to see if I can get on the, bat, on the uh, reel. Yeah, that's a good idea. Ooh. That last two feet of scope when I, uh, when you you know of line, when I went to get it on the reel, just went, you know, I'm like that's usually when you lose them, you know, you give them that, that much little line bit right of there. Slack. Oh. This guy is just staying down. Whoa, buddy. Whoa. That's another nice fish. All right, I'm gonna turn him. Nope. I'm having it. All right, I'm gonna turn his nose and see if I can get him coming right to you. Just like that. Look at that. Yeah. Nice. 
Racking up the numbers, Look Chris. at the color on these fish, huh? That lead swim away. There it goes. Good job, Chris. Yeah, yeah thanks, Woo. bro. So, hey, the lining, the gear that we're fishing, I know you said that we're fishing a 4X down below right now on the tip, but 4X fluorocarbon. And the name of the uh, fly again was? It's a mop fly. A mop, so just a basic mop fly. I put my own little twist on it. It's tied on a, on a barbless jig hook, so it's riding hook up, which I feel just keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you out of trouble and it gives you a nice tail waggle on the. It does, it gets the tail wiggling and you see like most of the time it falls out in the net, which is awesome, you know. Pretty much every time we've caught it in these nets, those, those uh, hookless nets, right out of it. Pops you know? right out. And so you don't do a lot of damage to the fish. The fish swims away happy. And I feel like if you don't beat up on the fish, physically beat up on them, yeah. you could come back in two days and catch, catch that same fish. Yeah. After having landed and released nearly a dozen beautiful trout from the drift boat, it was time to head downriver to the haul out point where we would load up and head into town for a quick bite before setting out to another location along the river Chris knew to hold trout. Now, what would this be considered? This isn't considered the upper part, right? Upper is... No, this is kind of the mid, yeah, mid, mid section. section. Yeah, Upper is real thin right now as far as water. Super thin. It, you know, it has a higher gradient and um, you get more tributaries coming in as you move down the river. Right. So there's just more water down here, but up by the dam, it is bony. I mean... Yeah, I saw that when we crossed over yeah, there. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And that's that's where all the browns are. See, what's a normal kind of like where they keep the water at? Uh, it, the minimum flow is at 125 CFS, maximum flow usually 900. Yeah, okay. But it can go up from there. You know, if we get a lot of rain, it could go up to yeah. 2,000. All right, so we're gonna push on. Looks like it's snowing out here with the amount of leaves that are coming down off of these trees. Now, do the leaves ever add an element to the fishing? It's a negative element, honestly. We call it the leaf hatch, and there are days where you can get leafed out. Right now, they're on the surface, and this isn't bad, but if you get a couple days of this, they'll start, start sinking down yeah, below. And the whole water column will just be filled yeah. with leaves. So, And so now we're going to head upstream a little bit here, work this stretch to just below this rapids here and see what we get. What do you say, Chris? You want to yeah, get after we're going to do it. I'm going to just push off a little bit, All get right. in the boat. And go ahead. Perfect. All right, everyone's in. Same sort of deal as before, we're going to be casting across and make a little mend. Yeah, okay. More of the same. And whenever you're ready. That works. I want to wait for this gust to pass and I'll throw it right in between that second seam. I think that's a good idea. Nice shot. 
That's it. Got him. Nice, Chris. Good job, right man. Right behind that rock. I don't even know if he knows he's hooked. Challenging conditions, and he got it done. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> job. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That was coming straight at us. Gale Force wins, made the cast. Good for you. No, dude, it's not going to come undone unless he stopped it. He landed so quick, he kind of came back toward the boat. You reached out and grabbed him. He's still hot. That's what it is. He's still so hot. Oh, he's off now. I think he's out. Yep. I think we're good. Look at this guy, huh? Come on, dude. You want to go back home or what? Want to hang out with Alan the Water Crew? Of course you do. He's <laughs> like, I want an Italian sub. He's like, I heard you got an extra one. There, this fish was holding right behind a boulder. You know, I tried to throw it up into that wind and the wind kind of knocked it down. I was okay with it because it was right behind that rock. It actually Perfect. started drifting back down towards us. And um, that was one of those ones where, for me, usually I don't set up on it, but I tried to get back as far as I could. That was a great cast. Challenging conditions, you put it right on the money. Chris, what are we about two, two and a half hours out of Boston? Two and a half hours out of Boston. This is a quick drive. You can come out here and fish a day and be back home in the comfort of your house by the, by the evening. I'll tell you what, guys, anyone living in the Metro West Boston, not just Metro West Boston, but anywhere in that two and a half, three hour drive, it's an easy run and it's a different world out here. Chris, if folks want to get in touch with you, what's your website? It's chrisjacksonflyfishing.com. I'll tell you what, two and a half hours, out of Boston, you get on the Mass Pike, it's more or less a straight shot, hit Springfield, get on 91, just head north till you hit Route 2, and you're here, and it's a different world. We've got great restaurants out here, lots of places to stay, and there's, there's other things to do too, aside from fishing. Over the 17 seasons of filming On the Water's Angling Adventures, I've been blessed to fish many beautiful locations from Cape May, New Jersey, to Prince Edward Island in Canada, to even getting a chance to cross the pond to fish for salmon in Ireland. I've met wonderful folks along the way and been awestruck by the breathtaking beauty of these locations. But having been born and raised in Massachusetts, I will forever hold a special place in my heart for the fall and the birch years, just fly fishing on the Deerfield River with a good friend like Chris Jackson.